All right, so I believe the last time that we left off, we had started problem 10, but I think we'll, I'm just gonna start the problem over again, just so, just so we don't miss anything. So we have a power cycle operates between the lake surface water at a temperature of 300 Kelvin, and we've listed that on there, and, a wa and water at a depth uh, whose temperature is 285 Kelvin. And then it says at steady state, the cycle develops a power output of 10, let's put that on there too, of uh, 10 kilowatts. So I'm going to draw my little arrow here. So here's my w.net out. And I'm going to put the little word net here as well. Um, again, on an exam, I'm going to be very specific about net versus, uh, yeah, I'll put on there, not just power output, but net power output, if that's what I'm wanting you to do. Okay. And so a power cycle works by receiving heat from our high temperature reservoir. So that's our Q dot H or Q dot N to our cycle. And then the Clausius statement, or not the Clausius statement, the Kelvin Planck statement, which refers to power cycles, tells us we have to have some amount of waste heat. So that's our Q dot L or our Q dot out. Um, and yeah, they do say that W dot net out is 10 kilowatts. And I think that's it. So while rejecting energy by heat transfer to a lower temperature, water at a rate of 14,400 kilojoules per minute. So I'll probably have to reconcile the kilojoules per minute and kilojoules per second, but we'll do that when we, when we have to do it. All right, and so we wanna find two things. Number one, we wanna find the thermal efficiency for that cycle. And then we wanna find the maximum thermal efficiency for any possible cycle. And that's gonna be for a reversible power cycle that's operating between those two reservoirs at uh, 300 Kelvin and 285 Kelvin. All right, so I don't really need to make any assumptions. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll make my, my solution. I'll start, start it up here. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna calculate my thermal efficiency. So the first one, part A, is asking me to find the thermal efficiency of the power cycle with these given operating parameters. So the operating parameters are the power net output, W dot net out, and the Q dot L. So those are the things that, I, that I'm working with. And I know that this guy is thermal efficiency. It's defined as W dot net out over my Q dot N. Or Q dot H, and I also know that my my first law tells me that for for any cycle, not just a power cycle, not a, just a refrigeration or a heat pump cycle, but any cycle, the W dot net out is equal to the Q dot net in. So that would be any Q dot in minus any Q dot out. All right, and so now I've got a way to define my thermal efficiency in terms of the just the W dot in and the Q dot out. So on the top, I'll have W dot net out, and then on the bottom, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna put him first, W dot net out plus my Q dot out. And then of course on the top I've got W dot net out. All right. And so if I plug those things in, let's see what I've got. So my thermal efficiency is going to be 4%. So 0.04, 4%, pretty sad. All right. All right. 
it's only for when, it, when I'm calculating the thermal efficiency for a reversible power cycle or the maximum possible thermal efficiency that I could that I could obtain it's only then that I'm going to use that formula with the temperatures okay so this is a very specific case it's only for if you see words like reversible maximum sometimes you'll you'll see words like minimum right uh, and we'll talk about that too. Usually when we talk about minimum, it's going to be if we're talking about a, a refrigerator and we're asking like, what's the minimum power input that we could expect to get away with? But if you see like extreme words like that, reversible, maximum, sometimes minimum, ideal, best, uh, things like that. Um, then you know that you're going to be calculating that performance parameter on just the temperatures. Okay, so those are your, kind of your key words to be paying attention to there. All right, so in this case, my thermal efficiency for a reversible power cycle, it's going to be 1 minus TL over TH. And you just need to make sure that those temperatures are in absolute temperature units. So I've got 285 on the top. And I've got 300 on the bottom. Of course, both of those are in Kelvin. Um, and so when we plug those things in, I get 0 0.05 or 5%. So, yeah, not great. Not great. But so if I were to ask you, if I were to ask you, you know, is this is this possible or not? Well, you would say, yeah. So this this guy here, it's it's a real possible real world cycle right and i know that because this thermal efficiency is less than the thermal efficiency for a reversible one right all right so if you would like to take a screenshot of that i'll put that right there all right so let's move on to problem 11. All right. So one method of power generation involves the utilization of geothermal energy, the energy of hot water underground as a heat source. If the supply of hot water at 140 degrees Celsius is found at a location where the environmental temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, we want to find the maximum thermal efficiency of a geothermal power plant built uh, at that location that it can have. So we're building a power plant. It's between these two reservoirs. What's the best case scenario uh, that we could expect for thermal efficiency, theoretically speaking? So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my, my little simplified diagram of a power cycle and I'm going to start drawing my arrows. So I know that a power cycle got a high temperature reservoir. I'll be receiving energy from that high temperature reservoir. Here's my, my Q dot N or my Q dot H. There's my Q dot out or my Q dot L. And I know that it works by hopefully creating some power. So there's my W dot net out. All right, and that's it, right? And so I guess the other thing that I wanna do, well, I'll just put up here what I'm looking for. So I'm looking for the maximum. And remember those key words, maximum, theoretical, ideal, reversible. They're all, they should make you all think of the same thing. So this is for a reversible power cycle, and it's going to only be dependent on those temperatures. So this one's not so bad. It's pretty, pretty cut and dry here, right? So it's one minus TL over TH, no problem. 
Um, the only thing that I need to be really careful about, remember if you find yourself dividing or multiplying by a temperature, it has to be in absolute temperature units. So this is going to be 140 plus 273 Kelvin, right? So three, uh, actually that's going to be 413 Kelvin. And this is going to be 20 plus 2, 73 Kelvin. So 293 Kelvin. All right, so I've got 293 Kelvin up here. And then on the bottom, I've got 413. So hopefully what that gives me is 0 0.291 or 29.1%. And oops, I should put reversible here. Reversible or maximum. That's the best case scenario. So I should know going in that I'm never gonna get more than that. Okay. All right, so if you wanna take a screenshot of that and we'll go on to the next guy. All right, problem 12. So this word, Carno. if you happen to be reading your book um, and you read chapter, I think chapter five, if I'm not mistaken, it's a really long, uh, or a long feeling chapter as uh, a lot of theoretical concepts being thrown about, uh, thrown about, about reversible and irreversible. Um, and Carno is another one of those words that gets thrown around. So a Carno cycle, oftentimes we hear it being referred to as a Carno power cycle, but we can also talk about Carno heat pump cycles or a refrigeration cycle. Again, those last two, oops. Remember when we talk about heat pump cycles and refrigeration cycles, a heat pump cycle and a refrigeration cycle, they do the exact same thing. And a lot of times people will just use one of those terms heat pump cycle or refrigeration cycle to, to describe the same thing. Um, but in this class, we will specifically call it a heat pump cycle if the point of it is to heat a space. And it, we will call it a refrigeration cycle if the point of it <clears throat> is to cool a space or cool a compartment. Um, and the only difference between how we treat them in this class is how we define that performance parameter, how we define that coefficient of performance. All right, but anyway, Carno, all that means is it's completely reversible. It is also a completely theoretical cycle. This is not something that's used in real life, but it's used as, again, something to compare to, to say, well, what's the best case scenario that we can get for this, the performance of this particular type of cycle. So when we, you think of reversible, you're thinking Carno, theoretical, uh, I just said reversible, I don't know what I'm writing it again. Um, we see words like ideal, right? Carno, ideal, theoretical, reversible, or you see these words like maximum or minimum, you are thinking okay, this is a reversible cycle. And so when I calculate the performance parameter, it is only going to be dependent on the temperatures. All right, so those are nice keywords to use. So you have a Carnot reversible refrigeration cycle. Refrigerator operates in a room where the temperature is 22 degrees and consumes two kilowatts of power when operating. If the food compartment of the refrigerator is to be maintained at three degrees, determine the rate of heat removal from the food compartment. 
So I went ahead and put the temperatures here because it should be pretty obvious which one is bigger and which one is smaller. <clears throat> But I am going to go ahead and draw my arrows and then I'll start thinking about um, how the problem statement relates to what I'm drawing. So a refrigerator, oops, a refrigerator pulls heat out of that low temperature reservoir. So here's my Q dot L or Q dot N to my cycle. It's going to dump some in my kitchen. Here's my Q dot H or Q dot out. And the Clausia statement says I have to have a W dot N, have to have a power input, don't have to have a W dot output. In fact, again, for any refrigerator or heat pump cycle that we look at in this class, we'll assume that W dot is equal to zero. All right, and so let's see what else we've got. All right, so the temperatures, I might as well put those in Kelvin before I go forward. So 273 plus 22, oops, adding another two there. So that's gonna be 295 <clears throat> Kelvin. Uh, 273 plus three, this'll be 276 Kelvin, okay. So I need to figure out, and, and the other thing that is also helpful is think about if it's a refrigerator, if you physically label those reservoirs, that might also help you interpret what the problem is telling me uh, or telling you. So this is my refrigerated compartment. And this is the kitchen or the environment. Okay. All right, so we've got pretty much everything up until this point, but it tells us determine the heat rate of heat removal from the food compartment. And so now it should be pretty obvious since I've labeled um, what those reservoirs are that I'm really looking for my Q dot L or my Q dot N. Um, if we're talking about a refrigerator, this is often called not my heating capacity, this is often called my, my cooling or my refrigeration capacity. So just be aware of that terminology. All right, so I notice that it is reversible because they told me it's a Carnot refrigerator and that means that if it's reversible, well, my COP for this refrigerator is going to be the COP for a reversible refrigerator. And I know that that is going to be only dependent on those temperatures. All right, so on the top, I'm going to have TL and on the bottom, I'm going to have TH minus TL. And again, I need to have those in terms of uh, temp uh, absolute temperature units. So on the top, I'm going to have three, uh, well, not three degrees Celsius. I'm going to have 276 Kelvin. And then on the bottom, you've got a temperature difference of, well, be 20, well, I'll put it in Kelvin, that's fine. 295 Kelvin minus 276 Kelvin. All right, and so let's see what our COP is. So I've got a COP of 14.5. Okay, so that's our, that's our COP for this guy. Also the same because it's a reversible refrigeration cycle, right? And I need to figure out what the Q dot N is. All right, well, I've this is a reversible uh, refrigeration cycle. Um, and so this is, I can also define this as my Q dot N over my W dot 
net in or my w dot n and i realize i forgot to put that this thing consumes two kilowatts of power so i should have everything and yes this is it's all for a reversible refrigeration cycle um, but that is what it is right so should be able to solve for q dot n i get a q dot n it's going to be two times that 14.5 so going to be 20 29 kilowatts there we go perfect all right so let me if you'd like to get a screenshot of all the stuff that we just wrote down there it is all right so let's go to the next guy all right, so we have a refrigerator is uh, to remove heat from a cooled space. Um, and so again, I'm gonna start off like I normally do and I'm gonna just draw my arrows. It's a refrigerator. So I'm gonna draw my arrow from that refrigerated space. Here's my Q dot N or my Q dot L. Pulling out from that refrigerated space Okay, and then dumping it in my kitchen. So here's my, oh, it's an ugly Q. Let's fix that. So here's my Q dot out or my Q dot H. All right. And of course, again, my Clausius statement tells me I have to plug it in. So there's my Q dot N. All right, so I think that's pretty good. Um, so let's read the rest of the problem statement. It says a refrigerator is to remove heat from a cooled space at a rate of 300 kilojoules per minute. So because I've labeled my reservoirs, it's easy for me to tell what that 300 kilojoules per minute is referring to. Uh, at a rate of 300 kilojoules per minute to maintain its temperature at eight at negative eight degrees um, and so i will you know obviously you need to put this stuff in kelvin so plus negative eight kelvin may as well do the same thing over here Oops. all right so it's gonna be 298 kelvin yeah all right, uh, so the next guy, oh. Good. 265 Kelvin, sorry. All right, and so the next guy we need is, okay, so we need, continuing on, <laughs> we need to determine the maximum power, in, or the minimum, I'm sorry, the minimum power input so w dot n minimum okay so again when you hear words like let's think about like the things that should make you think reversible ideal ideally best um word extreme words maximum minimum uh, I forget the other, Carno was another one, uh, theoretical, all these things should make you think reversible. All right, so again, I said sometimes it's maximum, some of you'll sometimes you'll see the word maximum, sometimes you'll see the word minimum, and it really comes down to what's best, what's best for us. So what's best for me for a refrigeration cycle or a heat pump is if it costs me less. So I'd be looking for a minimum W dot N, right? Minimum power input. And this is going to be if it's a refrigeration or a heat pump cycle. Oops. If you had a power cycle, you 
maybe what's best would be well the whole point of that power cycle is to get power out of it so i would look, be looking to maximize that that power output right so it all comes down to what's best right all right so don't get confused about well so why is it sometimes minimum sometimes maximum it's it's all about well what's best what's in our best interest right all right so i'm gonna kind of think i wanna oops move this somewhere else let's move this over here okay all right so we're trying to find the w dot n min all right so i'm gonna write it again w dot n min will be for a reversible refrigeration cycle. All right, so let's calculate, well, what would be the performance of, rever of a reversible refrigeration cycle? So COPR reversible. This is the one that's only dependent on the temperatures. So I got a TL at the top and a TH minus TL at the bottom. So again, you have to put those things in terms of absolute temperature units. But if you do, uh, hopefully you get 8.3, 8.03, I'm sorry. Okay. All right, great. But also for a reversible refrigeration cycle, you could define this as what we're interested in, right? The rate at which I'm pulling heat out of that refrigerated space and into the refrigerant that's going through that thermodynamic cycle over my W dot N, okay? And again, this is reversible, okay? So I'm given this guy right here. I know the rate at which it's pulling heat out of that refrigerated space. And so, well, now I've got 8.03 times that 300 kilojoules per minute. Um, and that's going to be, oh, actually, I'm sorry. I just realized I did my algebra wrong because I'm solving for W dot N. Okay. So W dot N for a reversible cycle. And again, remember, this is my W dot N min, best case scenario, ideally, that's what I'm getting. So it's gonna be my Q dot L, which is gonna be 300 kilojoules per minute divided by that COP, which is 8.03. Um, and I end up getting, let's see, I end up getting 37.36 kilojoules per minute. You could put it in kilowatts if you'd like. I've got 0.623 kilowatts if that's better. I don't think they, they didn't ask us for particular units, so that's fine. All right, so if you want to take a screenshot, there we go. All right, so two more. All right. So we have an air conditioning system. Sorry. So we have an air conditioning system operate, uh, operating on the reversed Carnot cycle. All right, so Don't get tie, uh, tied up on that. So a Carnot power cycle is what it sounds like. It's a reversible power cycle. A Carnot uh, refrigeration or heat pump cycle 
You could also refer to that as a reversed Carnot cycle. Oh, I'm sorry. Ooh. Okay, that <laughs> that abbreviation doesn't work anymore. This is a reversible power cycle. Um, there we go. Reversible power cycle is the same thing as a Carnot power cycle. A reversible Carnot cycle, or a reversed, yeah, I can't, I can't use those abbreviations anymore because it's got slightly different meanings. A reversed Carnot cycle is the same thing as a Carnot refrigeration or heat pump cycle. So, uh, if that uh, annoys you, <laughs> just pay attention to this little statement right here, okay? It's an air conditioning system. So when you hear the word air conditioning, it's cooling a space. This is a refrigeration cycle. Okay. And the other word that's important is Carnot, because again, Carno, you should think if it's Carno, you're thinking reversible, you're thinking theoretical, you're thinking ideal, best, you're thinking words like maximum or minimum, right? All of those words are indicating reversible. All right, so it is a reversible. refrigeration cycle and a reversible refrigeration cycle and I realize that I these temperatures are not correct I'm gonna cross this out cross this out we'll fix it in a second but a reverse a uh, refrigeration cycle works by pulling heat out of a low temperature reservoir at a rate of Q dot N or Q dot L and this so this is my air conditioning it's an air conditioning system so it's cooling my space, my house. And it's dumping it outside in the hot outdoors. So there's my Q.H dot H or my Q dot out. And the Clausius statement says I must have a W dot N. Perfect. All right. So Going back here. All right, so an air conditioning system operates on the reversed Carnot cycle, and it is required to transfer heat from a house at a rate of 750 kilojoules per minute. So coming out of the house, 750 kilojoules per minute uh, to maintain its temperature at 24 degrees Celsius. If the outdoor temperature is 35 degrees, okay, uh, determine the power required to operate this air conditioning system. So I am looking for W dot N. All right, and I'm gonna keep in mind that remember, this is a reversible uh, refrigeration cycle. So that's what I'm looking for. It's, a, it's the W dot N for a reversible cycle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by saying, all right, well, if this were reversible, which it is, I could calculate my coefficient of performance as TL over TH minus TL. Um, you do need to make sure that these guys are in absolute temperature units. So this is going to be uh, 297 Kelvin. Yep. Um, and then... And yeah, you do need to, so 273, 293, 290, oh no, it's not 298, it's 308. There we go. Um, yeah, so now I'm gonna plug the numbers in. So I've got 297 on the top. 
All right, and then we've got 308 minus 297, which should be a difference of 11 Kelvin, right? Yep. Um, and so I've got a COP of 10.2. But I also know this COP, yes, it's for a reversible cycle, but it is also defined as what I'm looking for, the Q dot L, the rate at which I'm pulling heat out of that house, i.e. my cooling capacity or my refrigeration capacity okay, over what I'm putting into it, my W dot N. And so now I should be able to figure out, I know my Q dot L, I know my COP, I should be able to figure out my W dot N. So my W dot N for a reversible cycle, uh, which is just my W dot N, right? That's what they asked for, uh, should be, I've got it in kilowatts. So yeah, do make sure that you put it in kilowatts. So this would be 750 times 60. No, 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 no. Divided by 60. That's going to get me things in terms of kilowatts. Um, but my, my power input ends up being 2.18 kilowatt. There we go. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to kind of put that there. And then if you'd like to take a screenshot, you can. All right. So I think we've got maybe two more problems. Oh, I'm sorry. I think I've got, oh, shoot. Don't take a screenshot of that. My numbers are fine. My numbers are fine, most of them. My equations are fine. But those numbers are actually the, num <laughs> the numbers for the next one, and I'm sorry. Everything else is fine. Uh, sorry about that. 750, yeah. So this guy is 27. So hopefully no one was internally screaming. I'm sure somebody was, but, but this ends up being 0.463. Sorry about that. So make sure that you fix this guy and that guy. So, so delete the previous screenshot and take a screenshot of this guy. Okay, so let's move on to problem 15. All right, so we have a heat pump and it's used to heat a house and maintain it at 24 degrees Celsius. Perfect. Um, maybe I want to go ahead and put this in absolute temperature units. So 273 plus two, uh, 24 would be 297 Kelvin. Okay. This guy would be 273 minus 5 to 268 Kelvin. All right, great. So it's a heat pump. Perfect. So a heat pump, the arrows go the same way as a refrigeration cycle, pulls heat out of this cold space at a rate of Q dot L or Q dot H. And my, but with a heat pump, right? The heat pump is heating up your house in the winter. So this is the cold outdoors. Okay. And a heat pump is used to heat a house and maintain it at a rate of, uh, maintain it at 24 degrees. So this is, this, oops, this is my, my house, my heated house. Okay. So I'm adding heat to that heated house at some rate of when I realize I put a Q dot H down here. I'm sorry. So this is a Q dot H. This is a Q dot out. And on the bottom, this should be a Q dot in. Sorry about that. And the Clausia statement tells me that it has to have a power input. Okay, perfect. So I guess we'll, we'll read the rest of our problem statement now. 
So a heat pump is used to heat a house and maintain it at 24 degrees Celsius. Okay. On a winter day when the outdoor temperature is negative five degrees, so five degrees, there we go. It's estimated to, the house is estimated to lose heat at a rate of 80,000 kilojoules per hour. So that's a little bit, you know, it might kind of give us pause as to, well, where is that going? Like, is that a Q dot out or a Q dot L? Um, and what's happening is if this guy is the house and the house is losing heat, I'm going to call this Q dot lost. It's losing heat at some, at a rate of 80,000 kilojoules per hour. If I want to keep that house at the same temperature, then I need to be adding heat at the same rate that I'm losing heat. So that Q dot lost has to be equal to what I'm putting into it, which is the Q dot H. Okay. And then we want to find the minimum, there's that word, power required. So I want to find W dot in minimum required to heat that heat uh, to to operate that heat pump so when you think minimum you're thinking all right well what's my power input required for a reversible uh, heat pump so perfect so I'll write that too so the minimum power input will be for a reversible heat pump. All right, so let's calculate our coefficient of performance. Uh, oops, and that's not a refrigeration cycle because we're heating things. We're gonna call it a heat pump. All right, so maximum. Well, I've got, I, since it's reversible, I know that I can define this in terms of temperatures. So this one's gonna be TH over TH minus TL. Remember for refrigeration, reversible refrigeration cycle, it's the TL is on the top. So this one's not really too difficult to memorize, but the key is if you needed to derive it, you put that COP in terms of Q dots and you replace the Q dots, Q dot L and Q dot H, you replace the Q dots with your with your temperatures. All right. So, but I should be able to get this. This is 297 Kelvin over uh, my 297 minus 268. Okay. So I this one's 10.2. All right. So again, they're asking minimum power required. That would be if this operated reversibly. Um, but I could also keep in mind, all right, well, it's reversible. But I could also define this as Q dot H over W dot net N or W dot N, right? Because for any heat pump or refrigeration cycle in this class, go ahead and assume that W dot out is equal to zero. And yeah, it looks pretty good. So I know my Q dot H is the 80,000 kilojoules per hour. I know what my COP is. And so now all I need to do is solve for my W dot N. So my W dot N for a reversible uh, heat pump is the same as the, the minimum that I could get, in, get away with. Um, and this ends up being uh, let's see. Yeah, you do need to put this in terms of seconds. So one hour, 3,600 seconds. That would give you things in kilojoules per second or kilowatts. And that would allow you to calculate that this guy is 2.18 kilowatts. Perfect. All right. So I will put, oops, I'm sorry, put that there. That way you can Get a screenshot if you would like. 
All right. So let's see, we got about 10 minutes left. I'm going to keep it the same as if we were in class. All right, so we have a heat pump. It's used to maintain a house at 22 degrees Celsius by extracting heat from the outside on a day when the outside air temperature is, 20, uh, is 2 degrees Celsius. So before I read any further, I see, okay, it's a heat pump. I know a heat pump is going to heat my house. Here's my house. Here's the cold outdoors. And I know that this thing is going to pull heat out of the cold outdoors at a rate of Q dot N or Q dot L. And it's going to add it to my house. So here's my Q dot out or Q dot H. Perfect. And Clausius statement says I have to have a W dot in and we'll assume that we don't have any W dot out. All right, we've already labeled the temperatures. So my house is at 22 degrees. So it's going to be 295 Kelvin. It's extracting heat from the outside air on a day when the outside temperature is 2 degrees. So that means this is going to be 275. Oops. 275 Kelvin. The house is estimated to lose heat at a rate of 110,000 kilojoules per hour. Okay, cool. So losing heat. Okay, losing a heat at a rate of 110,000 kilojoules per hour. Um, and then the heat pump consumes five kilowatts of electric power. Okay, oops. And then the question is, is that heat pump powerful enough to do the job? Okay. So before we get to what that means, let's kind of go back and just like the previous problem, I know that this Q dot lost has to be equal to my Q dot H because in order to keep the house at uh, 22 degrees Celsius, then I need to be adding heat at the rate, same rate that it's losing heat. All right, so is the, how, is the heat pump powerful enough to do the job? And another way to phrase this is is it possible? Is that possible? Right? Um, and we talked about some of the limits on um, limits on whether or not something was possible or not. We used, there was a problem with a heat pump where we t figured out, okay, is this possible or not? This is a or I'm sorry, we, we used a problem with a heat uh, power cycle and we decided, you know, whether it was possible or not, this is a heat pump and we could do the same thing. So you could think of it in two ways. You could say, um, is that W dot N? Um, if we think about minimum power input, right? We've done that before. We calculated, well, what's the best possible power input that I could get away with? So I could say, all right, well, is, is, is that greater than or equal that minimum power input that we need to run this thing? Or we could say, is the COP of this guy, is it greater than or equal to the COP for a reversible heat pump, right? So two different ways of talking about it. Um, and it really doesn't matter. I think I'm going to do it both ways just to show you. So let's, let's look at this first one. So I'll put, oops, I don't want that to be green. I want it to, I want it to be black. Okay, so option one, way to think about it. 
And it's what, you know, whatever makes sense in your head. So option one, I'll say is that w dot n, is it greater than or equal to my w dot n minimum? Okay, so I need to calculate my w dot n minimum. All right, and I know the w dot n minimum would be the same thing as the w dot n for a reversible uh, 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 heat pump cycle. So here's my COP for a heat pump or a reversible uh, heat pump cycle. And I know this is going to be dependent on the temperature. So I got a TH over TH minus TL. Perfect. So this ends up being, I have to put it in absolute temperature units, no problem. This ends up being 14.75. Perfect. So my other option, or I'm sorry, my other option. So the next thing that I need to do is say, okay, well, for that reversible refrigeration cycle or um, heat pump cycle, I could define this as Q dot H over W dot N. Um, and I know that that W dot N minimum is equal to the W dot N for a reversible heat pump cycle. Um, and I'm going to end up calculating to, yeah, make sure you put this in kilojoules per second, but I'm going to end up calculating 2.07 kilowatts. Okay. Um, and so what I can see is that the minimum is 2.07 kilowatts and the power input that we're putting in is five kilowatts. So yeah, yes, it's possible. In other words, yes, my heat pump is powerful enough. Um, the other option that you could think of is, is that COP for my heat pump, is that uh, greater than or equal to the COP, or actually it should be, I've got this mixed up. Because in order to be possible, your maximum <laughs> is going to be that for the reversible one, I'm sorry. So make sure you change that. So change that sign. Make sure you change that sign. All right. So I know that this guy is equal to 14.75. Uh, yeah. And then I could also calculate this guy based on the operating conditions. So my COP for this heat pump is going to be, be based on the things that they gave me. This 5 kilowatts um, and this 110,000 kilojoules per hour. So again, reconcile the hours and the seconds. Um, but this will be, let's see. So it's going to be my Q dot H over my W dot N, which is... Just going to be w dot n since my w dot out is equal to zero. All right, and so I end up getting. I actually don't know what I'm going to get. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to pause it just for a second. All right, so I've got six point one one. Okay. So, all right. So my COP for this cycle. Oops, not for, for my heat pump cycle. It's less than that, than the COP for a reversible heat pump cycle. So I would say, yes, it's possible. Okay. So if you need to take a screenshot, go ahead. We will work the last problem on Friday, and then we'll answer, I'll answer any other questions that you may have about uh, refrigeration cycles, heat pump cycles, or power cycles, or cycles in general. Um, and then um, we'll move on to 
chapter five, unit five stuff. So bring your unit five stuff and we'll start that. And that way you'll be ready for your exam on Wednesday, next Wednesday. So, all right. Thank you guys very much. Uh, sorry about the last minute cancellation. Sorry about that. Sorry. I had a sick child this morning. So, um, all right. Thank you very much. Y'all have a good, good uh, rest of your day. Thank you.